So there are three different trees that are built into Specify that are kept as sort of authority files. The obvious one is your taxonomy tree, um, which is essentially an internal authority that you are using for, for the particular taxonomy in your system. And then determinations are then linked to those taxonomic entries in the system to be able to link collection objects to the taxa in the tree. You can see that there are various columns there for each of the individual ranks that are found in this particular collection. Um, class, order, family, genus, species, subspecies. If you were working in a, in a herbarium collection, it would go right down through rank, forma, etc., etc. And you can manipulate which of those columns you want to include in your collection. Um, you'll also notice, and it's probably not visible, but um, down at the genus and species level, there are also numbers associated with each of those nodes. And that gives you an indication of how many objects are associated with that particular node. So you can come into the tree, click on a species name, say show me the associated collection objects and it'll show you all of the collection objects associated with that particular species name in your collection. You can also come in and you can edit individual, um, individual records within the tree. You can come in and, and, and it takes you straight back to the taxon form that we saw earlier. And so you can go and you can edit and put in common names and put in authors and all of those kinds of things associated with the name. You can also split the tree in half, which allows for drag and drop functionality. If there are um, taxa that have been put in the wrong place and you want to move them to the new parent, moving a genus to a family or moving a species to a genus, um, sometimes it's difficult to do that from the bottom of the tree to the top of the tree. And so we've allowed you to split the tree in half so that you can drag from the top to the bottom um, and affect those move and merge and synonymize events that you can do in these trees um, a little more successfully. Now your geography tree works in much the same way. You have continent, country, state, and county, um, and each of those levels um, functions in exactly the same way as the taxonomic tree. You can move things around, you can merge things, you can synonymize names, old names for countries with new names of countries to make sure that everything is successfully um, input into the correct place and each child has, a, has its correct parent. And then there, is, um, there are two paleo trees, which are not visible in the left-hand menu because I'm not working in a paleo tree, but there are in a paleo collection, but there are two paleo trees that function in much the same way. Each of those trees has a definition file that allows you to determine which of those ranks is visible and which ones of them are enforced, in which case you can't skip them, so that you can stop people from putting species into families and genera into orders, etc., um, you can enforce a lot of those ranks to make sure that that kind of thing is not being done. As I mentioned, you can create um, very complex reports for Specify as well in terms of labels, loan forms, gift forms, and all of those kinds of things. Um, we have a separate um, third-party application that we use for creating those called iReports. And this is essentially what the interface of iReports looks like. The process involves going in and creating a query within Specify of all the fields that you would want to show up on your report and then linking that query to the report so that you can essentially just drag and drop all of the fields onto the plane of the, of the label and set it up exactly the way that you want it. It supports barcodes, it supports images, it supports shape files, all of those kinds of things. And so you can go in and you can actually create a very, very complex label or loan form depending on what it is that you want for your particular collection. And so this is what a, a loan form looks like. So you can create these very complex loan forms that have images associated with them. They can be multi-page reports where the first page has all of the loan agreement information on it. The second page just continues on with the specimens. You can do summing and all those kinds of things down at the bottom and then have a specimen loan agreement at the end of the loan which then um, prints out along with all of the material to be sent out with the material on loan. We obviously cover all of the interactions within Specify as well, loans, gifts, accessions, um, exchanges in and out, um, all of those kinds of things are, um, are, are part and parcel of what Specify can do for you. Um, there is also a system in Specify called Record Sets, which allows you to then, um, very much like an Amazon shopping cart where you would go into Amazon and shop for a bunch of things and put them in your cart, you can do the same thing in Specify where you can do a query and grab a whole bunch of records and put them in a shopping cart to use them for, for some later purpose. So I can go in and do a query for a bunch of objects that somebody's interested in loaning, save it as a record set, and then I can just drag and drop that record set onto the loan item and it will automate the process of creating the loan for me. And so all of that kind of functionality is built into the system. 
Um, you can either go in and enter a, a batch of catalog numbers or you can use the record set item to create the loan. Once you've done that, it takes you through to a list of preparations that are available for those collection objects and you can select how many of those preparations you want to send out on loan or which preparations. Then it takes you through to the loan form and obviously all the fields for shipment information, how it was shipped, when it was shipped, who it was shipped by, how many packages, insurance, weight, all of those kinds of things are included in the form as well. Um, and then you can uh, generate an invoice for that particular loan and send the loan out to the respective party. One of the other things that we've incorporated into Specify is this thing called information requests, which allows you to then keep track of all of the information requests that you get for um, data in your collection. So somebody emails you and says, I'm interested in all the specimens you have for this particular genus. You can do a search, create a record set of that particular search, and then create an information request from that. There is an email client built into Specify so that you can automate the process of then sending that Excel spreadsheet of data out to that particular person from directly within Specify by using the information request item on the, on the left hand menu. The added bonus of that is that it actually keeps track of all the information requests that you have received from your collection so that you can tell how many information requests you've, um, you've handled in any particular time. And so this is what an information request would look like and the email would get di sent directly from within Specify. Obviously one of the major things that you would do in your collection is um, building queries to be able to query your database and bring back specific information from your database. The query builder is extremely robust. Um, you can add as many fields as you like to that query and put in criteria for those particular queries. There are a number of operators associated with individual fields. Um, less than, equal to, greater than, um, contains, in, empty, all of those kinds of things can be used on all of those operators to be able to do the necessary queries that you need um, to be able to do within your collection. There is also a brief statistics page built into Specify that gives you brief statistics about your collection. Some of the statistics that we as collection managers obviously all the time have to report to administration. It's nice to have a single page where you can see all of that information. How many loans you've processed, how many specimens you've catalogued, um, how many overdue loans you have, how many specimens you have from a particular genus, etc, etc. All of those statistics are available there. There are also some charting features built into Specify, the top five specimen species in your collection, um, the top seven number of specimens by country, um, and then also the items catalogued in the last 10 years so that you can get an idea of the growth of your collection. There is also a very robust security system built into Specify that allows you to set up users in the system and assign individual privileges to those individual users so that they can and can't do various things in the database. Um, it goes right down to the table level where you can give them view, add, modify and delete privileges for individual tables in the system. Um, there is also a tools function where you can give them um, certain uh, privileges to certain tools so you can allow them or disallow them to use the workbench or whatever the case may be um, and a number of preferences that you can set for those individual users. So you can set up as many users as you like in the system and you can set them up at any particular level so that they can and can't do various things and you can keep the security of your database um, fairly, fairly good. Um, there is also a schema configuration tool built into Specify that allows you to manipulate captions of fields to be able to set up all sorts of formats for fields, etc, etc. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Um, but safe to say that the, the entire system is very customizable. You can customize the system and build it up exactly the way that you want it for your particular collection. Now, I mentioned earlier the scatter gather reconcile, um, which is a mechanism that we've built into Specify for you to be able to database specimens in your collection based on other specimens that may have been databased already from another collection. So for instance, say you're a very small collection and, you, and you're sending duplicate herbarium sheets to other museums around the world, and they are able to database those sheets faster than you are able to database them. It would be really handy if you could use the information that they have databased into their system in order to be able to database the specimens in your collection. And so essentially what we've done is we've built a cache here at KU of all the GBIF herbarium data it's about 32 million records and growing um, and essentially allow you to then use skeletal records within your system to be able to interrogate those against records that are already in the GBIF cache 
so that you can then effectively pull data from those existing records to augment your records and then catalog them that much more efficiently into your collection. So essentially the system works through the workbench. Um, so here you can see some skeletal records of a bunch of, a bunch of herbarium specimens. So all we've entered is the genus, the species, the field number and the start date. And now we're going to try and match that information against existing records in the GBIF cache to be able to database all of the, all of the other data associated with these specimens. And so the process involves, um, first of all, creating a matching file and deciding which of those fields are most important to you in order to be able to match. Once you've created a matching file, you then run your, da your data set against the GBIF cache and you should get something that looks like this. Green is a very good match, red is a very bad match, and you can see in this example here that the field number is exactly the same, the collector's last name and first name is exactly the same, the taxon name is the same, and the date in which it was collected is exactly the same. But there's a whole bunch of ancillary data here that we did not enter into our records. And so now it's just a case of copying all of that data across into our record, augmenting our record, and then pulling it into the database um, so that we can database it that much more efficiently and that much quicker. One of the other things that we built into Specify is Life Mapper, which is another project that's being developed here at KU. Um, it's essentially predictive modeling of species distributions. Um, at the moment, all we've incorporated is the actual points on the map um, of data coming from the GBIF cache. And so essentially you can go in and search for a particular species and you can get an impression of where that species is found on the planet. And then down at the bottom you can say show my data and you can show your specimens as opposed to those in GBIF and get a, get a very good impression as to whether your, spe your specimens in your collection fall within the predicted distribution of that particular species. Hopefully at some point in the future we will also be able to incorporate the actual predictive models that are associated with these species points that are being derived by LifeMapper. One of the other things that we've incorporated into Specify is the GBIF IPT client, the Integrated Publishing Toolkit, that allows you to get your data out online and to join all of these consortiums that are out there like GBIF, NBII, Fishnet, Herbnet, Manus, Ornus, all of those kinds of things. Um, we have built the Darwin Core um, mappings into the system and essentially it's just a case of going in and mapping up your fields in your database to the Darwin Core terms and then exporting those terms out of your database as a CSV file and then incorporating that into the IPT web browser, web browser based client um, and getting your data up and online and publishing it so that the outside world can actually see it. So we ship with five different versions of Darwin Core, that's these XSD files that you can see here. You pick which version of Darwin Core you want to use and you plug that into the system using the import schema mapper. You then go in and you actually map up all of your terms to those Darwin Core terms. Map up your catalog, and catalog number field to the catalog number field in Darwin Core. And that essentially determines how your data is going to be ported out of your collection. Once you have that all set up, you use our little standalone export tool that then exports all of your data out of the system as a CSV file. Once you have that CSV file ready, you can then go into the IPT web, web browser based client and you can actually um, set yourself up as a collection and publish your data to the outside world so that others can actually see it. And then join all of these consortia. So this is one of the pages from the IPT client where you can set up all of your metadata and then you can select your source file which is your CSV file bring it into the system and hit publish and your data will be out and available to be able to join all of these portals. One of the things that we are heavily vested in at the moment is um, trying to convert Specify from a thick client, essentially a computer-based client, to a web-based client. And there are two different web-based um, um, incarnations that we are working on at the moment. The one is a, is a web-based browser portal to be able to get your data online and allow people to be able to search your collection and see what you have and request loans and, and do whatever. And the other is a thin client that will actually allow you to do um, full browser-based um, specify capabilities. You'll be able to do data entry, you'll be able to query your database, you'll be able to look at trees, etc., etc. Um, these are both being developed um, in collaboration with some partners in Sweden. Um, and they are in development and not yet available, but we are hoping that the web-based browser portal will be available before the end of the year. Um, the Thin client is going to be released in an iterative process and have 
um, various new capabilities being added along the way. So the first one is the web-based um, uh, portal. So this is a, an, initial, an initial view of the web-based portal. There's obviously still a lot of work to do. This is a, a, a demo version. But essentially, this is, this is the, the basics of how it would operate. Much like you have in Specify, you would have a simple search and you would have an advanced search button on the left-hand side. You would be able to go in and type in a term and it would bring back a whole bunch of records from your collection. You would then be able to go into those records. There's the advanced search on the left-hand side with all the fields, so you could construct a really complex search and bring back individual records from the database. Once you've brought back a whole bunch of records, you could interrogate each of those individual records and you could generate a map of exactly where that particular record came from. You would be able to generate a, a detailed view with all of, the, all of the information associated with that particular specimen, much like this. You'd be able to see all of the images associated with the specimen as well. Open those up, browse them, have a look at them, and do whatever you needed to do in order to decide which of those specimens were important to you. You would also be able to go into an image view and see all of the images associated with a particular search that you were doing and browse those images and zoom right in and look at details of those particular specimens and see if they were of interest to you. The, the, uh, the um, thin client would obviously be a login only type client where you would log into your database online. You would be able to get into um, particular forms associated with your collection, like a collection object form, and you would have the full functionality that you would have in the regular version of Specify um, in an online version, so that you would be able to work in your database online. This obviously opens up all sorts of doors for Specify in terms of collaboration, in terms of working in, in, in um, you know, strange parts of the world, um, being able to do data entry from the field, being able to do, do data entry from home, allowing institutions to collaborate with each other and having a single database um, that's you know stored in the cloud or stored at an institution somewhere and allowing people from multiple locations to be able to do data entry into that single database. And so it does open all sorts of doors for us um, and as I mentioned this is going to be released as an iterative process um, so more functionality will be coming um, as soon as we release this. Um, the, two, the two major components that are built into it right now are um, obviously being able to do data entry and being able to query the database, but we are hoping that more functionality will come along um, um, sometime down the road. So some of the future directions that we're looking at going besides all of the web stuff is obviously adding additional features. Um, some of the features that were in Specify 5 have yet to be added into um, Specify 6. So we're looking at adding a whole bunch of those features. Um, we're looking at being able to support um, a number of these other database management systems like SQL Server and Postgres and Oracle um, to be able to allow those people who have vested interests in Microsoft or Oracle to be able to use Specify as well. There are obviously a wealth of additional web services and partnerships out there that we can, uh, that we can explore. Um, and then one of the pet projects of one of our developers is developing an Android version of Specify um, that would essentially allow you to do data entry in the field using the GPS and the camera functionality of an Android phone you would be able to design these very simplistic little um, um, data entry forms and be able to do data in the field and then email it back to yourself back at home and then be able to bring it in through the workbench.